Hey everyone, we've all had those games where someone on your team doesn't connect at the start, and you can't remake, or when your bot lane feeds uncontrollably hard, or when you have a Yasuo on your team, or when you have no vision, and the game just feels unwinnable. The thing is, these don't make the games unwinnable, and I see far too many players just want to open mid or forfeit because of these. To share what I mean, we're going to be breaking down a smurf game in Platinum where I'm playing Diana, and all of those things I just said happen. My jungler never connects, I have a Yasuo top, a support that puts down 11 total wards over the course of the game, and a feeding bot lane. Before jumping into it, let's catch you up to what has happened so far. I won lane very hard, made a few roams at top lane, and I'm sitting at 7 and 0. Top lane is even, and bot lane fed really hard. Jin is 0 7, and Swain is 0 5. And remember, our jungler never connected. We just lost mid tower, and I'm heading down to bot lane because I don't want to be in mid. Whenever you're playing a champion that does well in a side lane, and your team isn't doing well, you want to look to go to a side lane and pressure there. If you try to group, you'll be sharing CS with everyone, and you'll lose your lead. Also, you can't take mid towers and someone will always be there to defend it. If you're playing something like Syndra or Ayana though, you want to stay in mid most of the time and clear waves. It's dangerous to go to a side lane or a control mage. Alright, so as I'm on the way to bot, I see our 0-7 Jin trying to take red buff. Of course, this doesn't make sense, so I run over real fast and take it from him. Word for word he said, I guess you want to lose, and puts up a forfeit vote. As if a 7-0 Diana wouldn't be able to do more with red over 0-7 Jin. Either way, I grab red and head to start pressuring bot. Whenever you're going to a side lane, the most important thing you need to do is pay attention to the minimap so you know how hard you can pressure. If everyone on the enemy team is missing, it's best to just push the wave and leave vision until you see the enemy show up somewhere. In this case, I saw Lee in top river, with Thresh and Ken in top lane as well. Then, Galio and Ezreal show up, meaning all five are top. They end up killing our Yasuo, and I just keep pushing, starting to work on the tower. Cannon shows up to defend, but I'm fed, and we know everyone on the enemy team is top side right now. Especially since Harold just died. This means I can play as aggressive as I want. In lower ranks, players think being on their tower makes them really safe. But if you're fed, you can easily dive someone at this point in the game. So I'm going to combo Kennen once to chunk him, then as he backs off, I'll start working on the tower again. Eventually, he just can't get himself to give up the tower, and I kill him, and then take it anyway. It's been a while since we saw everyone topside though, so I can't keep pushing. Instead, I'm going to pop my sweeper and go through the enemy jungle to see if I can maybe catch the enemy ADC coming to get bot wave after Kennen died. While doing that though, we see Thresh, Lee, Galio, and Ezreal in mid. Of course, I'm not going to try and help my teammates with that fight since everyone on the enemy team is fed except Galio. If I try to jump in, Galio and Thresh will just chain CC me. So I'm just going to take blue and recall to spend my gold. I know to recall here and not keep pushing because someone on my team just died. So if I try to push bot, they can easily rotate to me or dive our Yasuo who's alone on mid tower since Jin is rage splitting top. It's safer to just reset here. After that, it's back to bot lane for me. I don't want any part of a team fight. Just like before, looking at the minimap, I can only see Kennen in bot lane and everyone else is missing. If I go bot and die, we'll just lose. So I'm going to farm Krugs while waiting for the enemy team to show up somewhere. We see the biggest threats in mid now, Thresh and Ezreal, so I run into this bot brush looking to cheese Kennen as he clears this wave. Sadly, he doesn't keep pushing and I can't try to chase him into river. We have no vision and Dragon is about to come up, so they're all probably in the area. I'm just going to clear the wave and leave vision. While doing that, my support Swain gets caught and dies and the enemy team is grouping up mid. Now is a great time to talk about something very important when it comes to splitting and grouping, so I would like to be split pushing right now. But if I did, by the time I got the wave to the tower, the enemy team would be taking our base. It would just take way too long. If I was already pushing before Swain got caught, then it would be possible. But because everyone on the other team was near Dragon, I couldn't push. I have to accept that and recall to try and defend. Alright, so the enemy team used Herald and is sieging our inhib tower. In lower ranks, players don't really know how to play around towers, because right now they should be playing careful, poking down the tower as much as they can. But Thresh and Kennen are playing very disrespectfully, eating my cues and just standing there. So I'm going to jump in on Thresh, do a chunk of damage in Hourglass. Now look what this does. The enemy team is hard focused on me, so the rest of my team can finish off Thresh with the safety of the tower. Now they start to panic and are scattering, so we start taking down the easy ones like Galio and Kennen first. Ezreal and Lee are still alive though, and without Thresh, I can finally have a chance at killing this Ezreal who's worth a ton of gold since he's really fed. I use Q and Flash to buffer it and catch Ezreal with it, then wait for him to jump away, 
use my first charge of R to close the gap, then my second charge after he flashes, collecting a thousand gold. I'm not going to chase Lee since we finally have a chance to get some towers here. Then I'm going to head into the jungle to try and take some of their camps to get some more gold. While I was doing this, Yasuo chased Lee all the way to bot lane. He chased so long the enemy team respawned and ran to bot and killed him. I noticed the red buff was coming up though, which means Ezreal could be on his way to get it. I wanted to pick him, but he doesn't come, so I just take red and Krugs then recall. While I was doing that, my support Swain was farming topside, even though Baron is coming up in 10 seconds. This is a big deal since the game gets much harder here. If I try to split bot, they'll just take Baron, but we have no vision on Baron, so after clearing top wave I head into the jungle trying to see if I can spot someone or maybe take a peek at the Baron. Sadly for me, the enemy team was waiting in the brush and I get chain CC'd into death. This is obviously a really big deal, as I was worth a thousand gold and my team definitely can't stop them from getting Baron now. Also, this makes split pushing a lot harder. After they get Baron, I go top to push out the waves, but make sure I see Thresh and Galio mid first. Just like every other time I went to a side lane, I don't go too far unless I see others on the map. Alright, so what's going to happen next is the game changer. First, notice how close this wave is to the enemy tower in comparison to the wave bot side which I was talking about earlier. At bot, I couldn't push because they were all at dragon, but here I see them in mid and can start pressuring before they are on our towers. I see the enemy team starting to group up in mid with Baron, but the thing is, it's perfectly fine to give up the mid tower and the inhibitor. I spam ping my team to back off and tell them to give everything and just defend the nexus. On the nexus, they have two towers to help them. I take towers very fast, and even if I was mid, we probably couldn't stop them from taking our inhib tower anyways since they have Baron. By staying top, we can trade objectives instead, so we're still getting gold from this. Yasuo dies in our base since they are getting dove, but I'm still spam pinging and pushing top. I have TP, but it's pointless right now. I just want to trade as many objectives as I can. This is what I mean when I say lower ranks don't know how to play around towers. They should just be focusing purely on the towers, but they are diving my team in our base. Lee dies for this, which is really good for me, because now the odds of the enemy team being able to end goes way down, so I don't have to recall. The enemy team eventually takes our mid tower and inhibitor, and starts to work on the nexus towers. I'm making sure to constantly move my screen to check how they are doing though. If it looks like the enemy team can end, I'll TP or recall. But the enemy team is trying to dive again while Galio recalls. This is what happens when you start pressuring them. They don't know what to do and won't be on the same page. Ezreal wanted to keep pushing, but Galio recalled to come stop me, even though he can't. I'm working on the inhib, Ezreal dies, and Kennen and Thresh are in our base, so I know it's just Lee and Galio. I'm very fed and know these two can't kill me, so I act like I need to run to bait them in and away from their tower, then land Q on Lee and go in. I chunk him, then use Phage Rush to run away from the Galio taunt. Remember, the goal here is to take objectives. So after chunking him, I start working on the inhib again, but he walks up too far, so I land Q and kill him this time. Then it's back to the inhib. So if we look at the objective trade here, the enemy team got three towers and an inhib, while we got three towers and an inhib. If I recalled early and helped my team defend the nexus, they would have got two towers and an inhib, and we would have got nothing. Trading objectives is very important, you can give you a lot more gold than if you just try to defend towers, that would be really risky to fight on. Our mid tier 1 tower was bound to drop anyways with how low it was and they had Baron. Anyways, after recalling, I'm going to clear some waves of supers in mid while I wait to see the next move the enemy is going to make. The game is over if I die one time. The enemy team knows I'm basically the only threat. After waiting a while, Lee and Ezreal finally show top. This means they're probably going to siege top next. I could go bot here to try and split push, but the thing is, my team doesn't have two towers to defend the nexus anymore. If they die, the game is over. I don't want to risk that now, and I'm fed enough to potentially win a team fight. So I head into our jungle to grab some more gold and spot Galio there. This gives me a good idea that they have vision, so I bought my sweeper to try and find it. I don't find any, and know they are going to keep pushing top. So I go into this brush to try and look for a cheese kill. The person I want is Ezreal, but I need to make sure it isn't warded first. If it's warded, they can just bait me. Play it patient, and as soon as Lee uses Q to check the brush, I use Q and R to chunk Ezreal, but Lee kicks me away, so I flash and use my second alt charge to jump to Ezreal again and finish him off. I use Hourglass to buy myself some more time now, but I'm trapped in Thresh box waiting for my team to show up. I end up kiting just long enough for my shield to come out twice, which barely keeps me alive. After that, I'm going to recall and clear the minions in mid, then run to Baron to try and get a pick since it's coming up, and they should come to try and get vision. I have a head start though, because they were dead. Whenever you do this, it's really important to use Sweeper as you run. 
If you walk over a ward without knowing it, the enemy team will just 5 man you and it's over. I pick for my team to come as I'm waiting, but of course our Jin hits the vision plant to give away that I'm here, so Lee drops a control ward instead of face checking. I see Ezreal coming from topside though, so I stay here a little longer. I didn't expect him to walk this close since they just saw me here, so I missed my Q, but I use my R after he jumps away. Galia was waiting though, but I used my face rush to start running. Jin finally does something and uses heal on me, which gave me just enough health to one shot the Lee and phase rush out. And since the enemy team was trying to kill me, they ran straight into my teammates that were finally heading over after farming mid, and my teammates killed them all. And since I got the inhib top earlier, I can recall, TP back in, and end the game. Alright guys, so as you can see, even in a 4v5 with no jungler, no vision, and a feeding bot lane, by trading objectives and split pushing properly, I could keep myself fed and farmed and just wait for the enemy team to inevitably throw trying to dive my team under tower, which happens in almost every lower ranked game that I play. Hopefully you can see now that almost every game is winnable if you play smart and use your lead to the fullest. But that's going to be it for this video, thanks for watching.